The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 15541 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revision to the business programme for this week. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 15541. Formally moved. Thank you. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 15541, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 15537, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the Stage 3 consideration of the Education Scotland Bill. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 15537. Moved. Thank you. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 15537, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. Next item of business is topical questions. Question number one, Jean Urquhart. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what percentage of single farm payment applications in the Highlands and Islands and in the rest of Scotland has been paid as of the end of January. One moment, Ms Urquhart. Um, can we just check Ms Urquhart's microphone because I, for one, am having great difficulty hearing what she said and I see from nods around the chamber um, everybody else is the same. But given, uh, Ms Urquhart, that um, the question is on the order sheet, I'm just going right to the Minister uh, for an answer to that. But can we make sure that Ms Urquhart's uh, microphone is OK for our next question? Cabinet Secretary. I can confirm that the percentage of first instalment payments made in the Highlands and Islands is broadly similar to Scotland as a whole. At the end of January, around 28 per cent of farmers and crofters in the Highlands and Islands had received payment, and as I announced on Friday, the equivalent percentage for Scotland was almost 30 per cent, equating to around 5,000 applicants. Since then, I can confirm that around a further 1,000 payments have been authorised, bringing the total for Scotland to over 6,000 payments, around 34 per cent. I will, of course, keep Parliament infor involved, informed uh, of the payments and will write to the Rural Affairs and the Climate Change Committee every Friday, uh, updating them in Parliament. Let's try again, Ms Urquhart. Thank you. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his reply. You, you will know that many crofters in the Highlands and Islands region are having a very difficult time. Late payments combined with winter feeding and poor weather, poor low prices for beasts are not helping. And there is still deep resentment with regard to the €230,000 uh, that the Coalition Government did not forward to Scotland as it was intended. The NFU are claiming that although 30% of claimants have been paid, this is only 15% of the budget. Can you tell me if the, the percentage of claimants in the Highlands and Islands that have been paid in cash terms and what percentage that is of the budget? And finally, when can the many crofters facing hardship expect to be paid? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you. Yes, can I just start by saying to Jean Urquhart and other members, I do of course appreciate the very real pressures facing many farming and crofting business, businesses throughout Scotland. Uh, not only have they had the recent storms and flooding uh, and wet weather over many months to contend with, but also the low commodity prices and other issues facing the market, not just in the UK and uh, Europe, but throughout the world uh, as well. And of course, at the same time, we've got the biggest ever uh, radical reforms to the common agricultural policy and how that's implemented in Scotland. Not only are we moving to area payments for the first time, we're also introducing greening elements as well. And here in Scotland, we took an additional set of decisions to add more complexity for good reasons, because that was trying to tailor a European policy to Scottish circumstances. Uh, I'm happy to ensure that the amount of money that's been issued to the Highlands Islands is calculated in monetary terms, and I'll forward that to Jean Urquhart. Uh, as soon as I can. Uh, in the meantime, of course, I should point out that the reforms actually will lead to more payments going to the Crofton counties between now and 2019 uh, as well. Uh, we are doing our utmost to make sure that the payments go to as many crofters and farmers uh, as possible before the end of March. Uh, the first instalment was to be a minimum of 70% of the payment to farmers and crofters. We've actually issued 80% in terms of the first instalment to farmers and crofters so far. And I'll do my best to keep Jean Urquhart and other members updated. Tavis Scott.
Presiding officer, um, would the minister, would the cabinet secretary, be prepared to indicate to Parliament how many crofters in Shetland uh, will receive their uh, payments by the end of March, given that half have yet to do so? Uh, will it be all of the crofters in Shetland? Uh, will he also clarify how much they will get? Because, as he knows from the response to his letter of the 17th of December, most crofters and indeed farmers across the country don't yet know how much they're going to get. And would he consider reissuing a letter, um, as he did on the 17th of December, clarifying that? given that would provide some assistance to banks and to others who are seeking to help uh, crofters who are very hard pressed at this time. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, again, I reiterate that uh, crofters in Shetland and elsewhere are facing a, a number of pressures at the moment and I am certainly keeping the banks updated and hope to meet them personally this week uh, as well. And I am aware that the banks are saying to the government that they are maintaining credit uh, and working with the industry uh, through the coming months, and I hope they do keep that up. But it's really important that any MSP in the Chamber who is aware of hardship cases uh, urges their uh, constituents to either use the helpline that's available or to call into their local regional office, where local staff will do their utmost to prioritise those cases where there is a case of hardship, genuine hardship. Uh, I know that is happening already. Clearly, the complexity of each case will determine the pace at which it is paid. That is why I am unable to give precise figures to Tavi Scott or others, because now we are moving to an area-based system. And until we know what the payments are, the accurate payments to most crofters, we do not know uh, what the payments will be to all crofters or farmers, because uh, if there are errors with some applications and payment rates, that can influence the overall pot and what other farmers and uh, crofters receive as well. And that is why there is a two-part payment, because we need as much information as possible moving forward to make sure there is accuracy with the final payments. This is a transition year. It is the first time we have done it, the first time we have paid out on an area basis. Dave Thompson. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that there are many uh, crofters and farmers in, in my constituency who are suffering at the moment, and he's alluded to that already. And I thank him for his comments in relation to the helplines and the fact that people who are suffering hardship will be able to phone those helplines and phone their local offices and make the case to the local officials and hopefully get a bit of help, because it's those who have a cash flow problem that are really going to struggle. Can he uh, let us know what is being done to ensure that lessons are being learned from this and that the payments at the end of this year will be handled in a better way? Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> well, can I say to Dave Thompson, he raises a number of pertinent points. Firstly, many of the tasks that, that have been undertaken by the IT system are one-off tasks because this is the first year that we have had to go through a reform, a radical reform, not only of Pillar 1, which is direct payments within the Common Agricultural Policy, but also Pillar 2, which is the Rural Development Programme eh, as well. And that's required 20 separate schemes to be launched in 2015 alone. And within the direct payments, we've had six schemes alone, many of which have regional variations because of the industry requirement to ensure there's regional targeting, eh, which was supported by the Scottish Government. At the same time, we also decided that area payments should be at three different levels of payment depending on the kind of land, because we wanted to ensure we targeted resources to the most active farmers and crofters uh, in Scotland. Again, that was supported by the industry and this Parliament. So many of those tasks are one-off tasks, and will continue to improve the IT system and indeed learn lessons, as Dave Thompson said, which we shall certainly do as we move forward. The Chamber will also be familiar that in 2005, uh, south of the border, they had to also move to area payments and encountered major difficulties at that point in time, and only a couple of percent of farmers received payments in February uh, 2005. Uh, we are much higher than that in Scotland, albeit we save, face similar challenges. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I point out to the Cabinet Secretary that the Scottish Crofting Foundation is saying only 1% of their members had received payments in mid-January, so maybe he could contact them to see where that discrepancy comes up. Um, he's also aware that this is the time of year that crofters are feeding animals, and it's in a very expensive time of year for them. I know he's spoken to banks. Has he spoken to suppliers about providing that feedstuff? Because if not, there could be real animal welfare issues because of lack of feeding stuff available and the lack of ability to pay for it. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I, I will pay attention to the issues outlined by Rhoda Grant, and we are ensuring and will ensure this week that as many sectors within agriculture as possible 
are uh, aware of the payments and the arrangements being made to expedite payments and the fact that we are confident payments will continue each and every week, hopefully between now and the end of March, and we'll get as many payments out before the end of the March in terms of the first instalments uh, as possible. Uh, the, the system is paying out, uh, as I said earlier on, uh, we're now at around about 34-35% of payments in the system with over 30% or around 30% of recipients having received their payments uh, last Friday. So we will expedite those payments uh, as much as we can in the coming weeks and months. Alex Ferguson. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary is often adept at deflecting attention away from the shambles of the £180 million IT system that his reformed CAP is reliant on. Indeed, following time for reflection, I'm tempted to suggest it might have been better to have used a pencil. Um, <laughs> but can I ask what assurances the Cabinet Secretary can give that the problems of the IT system, which are acknowledged, will all be addressed by the time the next, the next basic payment scheme application window opens in May, only three months away? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, firstly, <clears throat> there's a separate team working on the IT for next year's payments, and we hope to launch that uh, as planned in terms of the window for applications for next year's payments. I can assure Alec Ferguson that that's the case. Mm -hmm. can I can also just, just use this opportunity to commend Alec Ferguson and how he also manages to successfully deflect from the fact that the Conservative government's policy is actually to scrap Pillar 1 payments and not have any Pillar 1 payments and direct payments in Scotland. And therefore, some of us who are quite reasonable may think there's some hypocrisy in coming to the Chamber and complaining about the timetable for direct payments when his party's policy is to have no direct payments for Scottish farm and for Scottish agriculture. Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President. Officer. Can I advise the Cabinet Secretary? I was contacted by a constituent earlier this week who is yet to receive a letter detailing her entitlement. The Government's online record does not even show an acknowledgement of the farm that she and her husband uh, are renting. After phoning the Government's helpline referred to by the Cabinet Secretary, she states, quote, staff aren't even allowed to look up people's payments. We now seem to have fallen into the hole within the Department where no one knows anything about our application. What reassurance can the Cabinet Secretary give me that, having failed to meet the January deadline, the measures he has now announced will allow my constituent and many like her to get the information and, indeed, the payments that they are looking for? Cabinet Secretary. Um, as I reiterate, the applications have to be processed before any payment can be made under European regulations. Yes, we'd much rather be further afford than where we are at the moment and have payments going out more quickly. Uh, but because of the reasons I explained earlier on, we are giving a timetable that will get as many payments out as possible between now uh, and the end of March, with the balance being paid in April. And each case very much depends on that case's complexity as to the timetable, as to when it will be paid. If Liam MacArthur has a specific case, uh, I'd, I'd be pleased to hear about it, and I'll certainly investigate it in terms of what that particular crofter uh, or farmer has been told. Graham Pearson. Thank you, President Officer. For completeness, can I tell the Cabinet Secretary that only this week I was approached by farmers in Ayrshire. It's their intentions of raising the matter of the payments at the next NFU meeting. Uh, the farmers left me in no doubt that they're in great financial uh, difficulties, not only in relation to the delay in the payments, but also the cost of, of supplying milk at the current levels. Uh, will he pay attention also to the south of Scotland and the difficulties that are faced there? And I will write to him with the details of the farmers' concern. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I tell Graham Pearson that I have agreed to meet a group of dairy farmers, I think, later this week, but I'll, I'll, I'll be firming up my diary uh, today, no doubt about that. Uh, because I would very much recognise the financial pressures and market situation facing our dairy farmers in Scotland and Ayrshire and uh, South West Scotland and elsewhere. And that is one reason why we, will, we are throwing as much effort and resources as possible at getting the payments out between now and the coming months, because we recognise that they need uh, that support for their cash flow. But there is a whole range of uh, coinciding factors now facing Scottish agriculture. We have seen the weather, we have seen the storms, the flooding, and of course we see the market conditions, particularly in the dairy sector, uh, and also that is coinciding with the transition year into the new common agricultural policy, which is the most complex ever and has had the most reforms happening ever at the one time. Thank you. That ends topical questions. The next item of business this afternoon is stage three.